Hello, I'm George Herbig here, Chief Forecaster for Weather Now Kentucky. What we're discussing in this video is storms that may impact the area Sunday, June 11th. A couple lines of storms. We'll dive in on the details of what to expect, when to expect it, and how to expect it. Make sure to drop a like on the video here on Facebook and on YouTube as well. Follow us on both. I'll catch you guys in the next one. For now, let's dive on into the details. So what we're talking about here are two lines of storms that should develop. Now, on the model data itself, it's a little bit back and forth on what exactly to expect, depending upon which model that you're looking at. What we're going to do here is go with the model that has been performing the best, as well as adding in some context based off of our own gut feelings and research here. So this is uh, actually the NAM3K model valid for about 4 to 5 a.m. As it pushes on through each hour here, you'll see some ongoing showers that should move out of the way by about 8 to 10 a.m. Eastern time. Now, <clears throat> if these showers linger around for longer, it will impact things. If they move out faster, it will impact things. So how this first line of storms come through will tell us a lot. So this forecast may change as the morning goes on tomorrow. So make sure you're, you're you know, tuning in for updates and checking back in on whatever weather outlet you choose for more updates on what to expect there. But as we push this on through here, you'll see that things kind of clear out and should allow for some time for things to kind of go ahead and what we call destabilize. Basically, it'll kick up more energy. It'll allow for more things to start building up when it comes to fuel for storms. Uh, let's check the cloud cover here. After those morning line of storms move out, some breaks in the clouds do occur and that allow for some more sunshine to poke through. And if you guys have followed me for long, you know that sunshine on stormy days can equal some uh, tougher storms uh, once those storms do get going there. So this is 1 p.m., 2 and 3 p.m., 4 p.m., 5 p.m., 6 p.m., and they start seeing some things are rolling out. Now, the question is, where exactly does this second line develop? This model on this particular run has it developing just past Paducah, just past Mayfield, just past that far western portion of the state. Has it developing more toward Hopkinsville, Madisonville, up toward Owensboro, and then pushing on east through I-65 corridor, and then out toward eastern Kentucky, where it should go ahead and start to die down. Now, if that starts a little bit earlier toward Paducah, you know, it, it kind of plays with some things here. So again, make sure these are one of those events that you just have to check back for updates. Uh, this is going to be more of a live cast or now cast event, basically, where we'll change our forecast as this goes, you know, as this goes into motion, which I know no one wants to hear, but quite frankly, it's the truth. But as this pushes on through here, I'll go and pull this back up. 5 to 6 p.m. should be the time frame of where it initiates back out here toward, again, the Hopkinsville, Madisonville, Owensboro line of areas there. And then you can kind of go ahead and already see some of the purple blobs popping up here. Those are pretty, pretty good indications of hail. Now, this is not going to be exactly where this lines up. It'll wiggle back and forth. Again, check back for updates on that. As this pushes on through, you can see that it keeps its strength, turns into more of a straight line wind damage event. And then as it gets to about the Lexington and Somerset areas, it should have one last gasp, if you will, and then begin to die down. Uh, that's just because it's running out of fuel. It's running ahead of the actual main line of fuel. Um, it's actually running behind the main line of Cape Energy. And then as this pushes on out, it, it, it kind of just dies out into some showers for our friends out there toward Tennessee uh, the, and the Carolina areas as well. So uh, updraft helicity, this is going to show us if these storms are rotating, if they can produce any. And again, rotating storms don't always indicate tornadoes. They can indicate hail. They can indicate um, some brief gust of severe level winds. Um, so as we push this on through, I'm actually just going to go ahead and click this all the way forward here. It does show us some rotating storms as these move on through it's not a ton it's also it's also not a little bit it's it's right there just enough to to show things popping out now this little blob up here toward the ohio river um toward northern portions of kentucky that may be a little bit overdone i do think the main focus of this is back out toward that south central portion of the area so i'm gonna go ahead and pull up our our map here once again i want to show you i think our main focus here focus is, is this area in red here so uh basically anywhere from hopkinsville again back out toward that western portion of the area and then toward uh you know the i-65 corridor out toward lexington and somerset back down toward bowling green now this red zone can shift a little bit again it all depends on how that first line of storms move through in the morning it'll impact the area as well as depending upon where those storms develop now, if they develop a little bit back out toward Cape Girardeau and Carbondale, we could include Paducah, the Mayfield areas in it. Or if it does go ahead 
and develop where the model data is suggesting right now, it would actually leave out the Paducah Mayfield area and then go toward this red zone. So the main primary concerns, once again, 60 to 70 mile per hour wind gusts cannot be ruled out with this as well as perhaps some large hail uh, coming down with these storms as they move east here. And then an isolated chance at a tornado or two. Now that risk does look pretty low. I will say it does look pretty low, but it's not zero. The main time frames, once again, being between 3 to 7 p.m. ish. Uh, again, depending upon when those storms develop, it'll, it, it will change a lot of things, folks. So in all, make sure that you're staying up to date on what to expect, as this is one of those systems that could change back and forth, as well as preparing for all modes of severe weather, pretty much in all of Kentucky, just to make sure that you're safe. But especially if you're in that red zone that we, that we just showed, Make sure that you're prepared for all modes of severe weather tomorrow. Uh, during about, again, 3 to 7 p.m. could be a little bit different as we head throughout the day. So thank you for tuning on in. I'm George Herbig, Chief Forecaster here for WNK. I'll catch you guys in the next one. If you did enjoy the video, again, please leave a like on the video. It'll help us out a lot. Stay safe out there, Kentucky. Peace out.